Have you ever noticed how many of the friendships in Jane Austen's novels are either really messy and complicated or just outright toxic? Yeah, that's a thing. Now, there are plenty of examples of friendships that are not messy or toxic, like, for instance, Elizabeth and Jane Bennett, or Catherine Moreland and Eleanor Tilney, but uh, a lot of them do veer that direction. So, let's talk about that. I think my favorite example of a toxic friend in the works of Jane Austen, you might think I'm going to say Caroline Bingley, but I'm actually going to say Isabella Thorpe from Northanger Abbey. Isabella is the first friend that Catherine Moreland makes in Bath, but she's just totally manipulative and only in it for her own self-interest, and her friendship with Catherine ultimately turns out to be a very negative thing. She and her brother are looking for, basically, rich people to marry for the money, and they single out the Morelands as, theoretically, this very wealthy family. Now, the Morelands are not wealthy. They have a lot of siblings, their father is a clergyman, they are certainly upper class in the same way that the Dashwoods or the Bennets are upper class, but not in the way that the Darcys are upper class. And that's more what Isabella and her brother are looking for. So Isabella courts Catherine's brother, while Isabella's brother courts Catherine, they have it all planned out, only it turns out Catherine doesn't want to marry Isabella's brother, and while Catherine's brother does want to marry Isabella, their father isn't going to be able to give them a whole lot of money. Isabella's friendship with Catherine was in many ways a bad influence, and the uh, obsession that they had with gothic novels, which totally captures Catherine's imagination, is what leads her to make bad assumptions about the Tilneys later on. But even aside from that, just the way that she is basically only using Catherine to find herself and her brother a way to marry rich just totally rubs me the wrong way. Another character who I see as very similar in terms of not really being a good friend is Mary Crawford from Mansfield Park. Now, Mary has a couple of advantages over Isabella. Well, Mary and Henry Crawford are aiming to marry Fanny and Edmund in a way that's sort of similar to the Thorpes and the Morelands. Making nice with Fanny isn't really going to help Mary to get in the good graces of the Bertrams because Fanny is the poor relation who was sent to live with them, but is kind of treated like, almost like a servant, and so being nice to Fanny is actually probably one of the better things that Mary does, but her whole scheme to marry Edmund and the way that she pushes him to choose a different profession when he wants to be a clergyman because she doesn't want to be a clergyman's wife, and the way that she just can't see that that might mean they're not all that compatible, and this way that she has of pushing others to do what she wants rather than accepting them for who they are very much comes into play when Fanny rejects Mary's brother Henry. All of a sudden, Mary doesn't seem like such a good friend anymore. Mary was, of course, in on Henry's scheme to seduce Fanny and then saw that it turned into genuine feelings and desire to marry her. And like many people, it seems as though Mary doesn't really care about Fanny's desires or preferences or what would really be best for her, but is primarily interested in pushing her into what she, Mary, wants for her. And maybe what she wants for herself as well. Because I do think it's possible that Mary viewed Fanny as a threat to her plan to marry Edmund. Another so-called friendship that I think is very much founded on manipulation and one party seeing the other as a threat is Lucy Steele and Eleanor Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. Lucy claims that she wants to be friends with Eleanor because she knows that Edward sees her as like a friend and a sister, and therefore she knows that she can trust her. But obviously there's a problem there in that Eleanor is in love with Edward, who's secretly engaged to Lucy. And despite the engagement being a long one and the, the feelings are no longer there, Lucy is going to hold him to it. And she takes Eleanor into her confidence about this and tells her everything and makes her promise to keep it a secret, which Eleanor does, even though it breaks her heart to do it, and of course, she also is in love with him. Lucy is not a likable character regardless, but how bad the whole thing is really depends on how you read her motives in confiding in Eleanor. She claims that she very much trusts Eleanor because she is Edward's friend, but I think it's also very easy to read it as 
her being jealous because she suspects that Edward has feelings for Eleanor and wanting to kind of mark her territory, so to speak. And if you take that view, then her confiding in Eleanor about the man that they both want to marry and making it very clear that she got there first and that Eleanor doesn't have a chance, that seems pretty cruel. It feels very much like she is motivated by feeling threatened by Eleanor, not by any genuine desire to be friends or feeling that she really can trust her, no matter what she says to the contrary. Of course, I had to talk about Caroline Bingley. She presents herself in a way that seems like a very good friend. Elizabeth is initially impressed with her and Jane very much is, but she ends up being very much manipulative and just out for her own best interests. And she has this whole plan that involves her and her brother marrying Darcy and his sister. And she doesn't really care about what's best for her brother or for Darcy and Georgiana, or certainly not for the Bennet girls as much as she claims to be their friend. I think she just kind of sees them as threats to her getting what she wants, which honestly, I wouldn't even find to be a huge problem if she didn't also pretend to be their friend. I mean, obviously she'd be an antagonist regardless, but the fact that she puts forth this false veneer of friendship just makes it so much worse. In the same novel, there's also a more nuanced view of a complicated friendship between Elizabeth Bennet and Charlotte Lucas. Now, nothing that happens between them is anywhere near as toxic or unpleasant as these other ones that I've been naming, but it does get a little bit messy. When Elizabeth turns down Mr. Collins, Charlotte accepts him, and Elizabeth is just heartbroken and furious because you're my friend and I don't want to see you get married to this guy who no woman on earth would want to be hitched to. Later on in the novel, despite they're falling out over Charlotte's choice to marry Collins, they do kind of come to a better understanding of each other. And it's made clear that while the life that Charlotte has chosen would not have suited Lizzie, it is what Charlotte wanted and she is satisfied with it. So while their relationship is complex, it's certainly not as unhealthy as some of these others. And it certainly comes from a place of genuine, friendship and concern and not manipulation, which makes it different from some of the others. What I find really interesting is that there's a similar relationship dynamic to some of these others in Emma, but with Emma as the false friend. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying that Emma's friendship with Harriet Smith is as bad intentioned as, say, Caroline's with Jane or Isabella's with Catherine, but I am saying she's not really thinking about Harriet's wants or needs or best interests. She's thinking about her own. She encourages Harriet to turn down a man who proposed marriage and who Harriet has feelings for because Emma doesn't think that he's good enough. And Emma wants to keep Harriet as her friend. And if Harriet married a tenant farmer, that couldn't happen. In the end, though, that just makes Harriet unhappy, and the happy ending does involve her getting together with the guy that Emma tried to keep her away from, after many failed attempts by Emma to match Harriet up with someone of her own social class. I remember reading that Jane Austen described Emma as a heroine that no one but herself would like. I don't know if those were, you know, that's a paraphrase, it's not the exact words, but I remember reading that sentiment somewhere. and. I think it's interesting that Emma falls into this pattern of not really thinking about her friend's best interests and kind of projecting her own desires onto her in a way that it's more genuinely caring than some of these others, but does kind of resemble them in a way. All of Jane Austen's protagonists grow and change over the course of their stories, and that's especially true of Emma, who starts off as a pretty selfish person and becomes more selfless and caring over the course of the novel. A big part of her character development is realizing that her own preferences or desires don't take precedence over what's best for someone else, and her friendship with Harriet is a big part of that. Can you think of any toxic friendships in Jane Austen that I've missed? Feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you liked this, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos twice a week.